Hey everybody, my name is Dowden, and in this video, we're going to be looking at two techniques that you may not know about, or you may know about, but you're not really using. I find that it's not one that uh, I see in common practice, but it is something that can really elevate the width, or at least emulate the width of maybe a mono sound, or just a sound that isn't very wide, but it could be stereo. So let's go ahead, dive into it. But before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get more videos like this one. Okay, so we have a couple of examples here. I have this mono hat, a wide hat, and then I have a guitar pluck. What I'm gonna do with the mono hat is actually change it from a mono signal to a stereo signal. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by changing the left and right signals by using left and right EQ. So a mono signal is just a signal signal, or it is two signals that are left and right, but they're the exact same. So by changing the left or the right signal by anything, we're creating a stereo image. And by doing so, we can make a sound much more wide and more interesting. Let's take this mono hat, I'm going to play it, and you can actually look down in this imager and see that it is in fact mono. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up that hat, bring in an EQ. Keep in mind that not every EQ will have this feature, but the stock Ableton EQ8 does have this mode, and it's called left-right. So we go here, and now this edit button goes from left to right, and that's going to be controlling the frequencies in the left side of the mix, or the sound, and the right side of the mix, or the sound that you're working with. It's going to be affecting the left side or the right side of the sound that you are equalizing. So let's go ahead and take a listen again, but this time I'm going to start to move this left high pass filter up. And as I'm doing this, pay attention to what's happening over here in the imager. So as I move that high pass filter up and start taking away information from the left side of the sound, we are getting a stereo image because now these are different sounds. They're playing different, they sound different, and that is creating a stereo image. It sounds more interesting to our ears, but if we go too far with this, we're actually getting something called phase cancellation. That's something that you have to be careful of anytime that you're working with audio, especially when you're EQing. But for this case, we have a phase correlation meter and we can use our ears to really hear that it is getting pretty washed out and phased once we get up to around 3 or 4K. The higher we go, the more phase cancellation we get. Until a certain point. Right about there is the worst. So we obviously don't want to do that, but I'm going to back this off and we're going to make some slight changes to the left and the right side of this signal. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just boost the left a little bit and maybe we'll take something out around here. Go to the right and just to keep it simple, I'm going to do the complete opposite. Let's bring this down a little bit, it doesn't have to be exact, and push this up a little bit. Now we can take a listen to before and after. So right away you can hear that it's a little bit wider, but we are pretty heavily balanced on the left side of the stereo signal. So we can fix this very easily by just panning the signal. But if you wanna do it from the actual source and inside of the EQ, you just have to be more careful with your balance. So because we are pretty heavy on the left, maybe we need to reduce a little bit of that push that we've put in here, that boost. And maybe with the right, we need to just to compensate a little bit. Maybe over here we can push up a little bit and try to balance out what we're giving the left and the right side of that image. I'm gonna put this filter on as well and just take a little bit of that bottom out because we don't want that. There we go. Much more balanced now. Feels a little weak on the left side, so I'm gonna boost this just a slight amount. So there we go, we've taken a mono signal and we have turned it into a stereo signal pretty easily using this left and right technique. But what if we wanted to do that to a stereo signal and make it even more interesting? So we can go ahead and grab this wide hat. There's no EQ on it and you can see that it's already stereo. 
So I can grab my EQ8 again, turn on the left slash right, and we can take a listen and make a decision. What do we want more in the left speaker or the headphone or listening device? And what do we want more in the right side of wherever we're listening or in the context of the mix? Maybe you have, you know, some shakers that you've already panned to the left. They're taking up some of that high end and you want to have that hi-hat hit the same time, but you want it to kind of be more on the right side of the image so that you have a healthy balance between the left and the right. So I'm going to take the right side and I'm going to boost it up a little bit, assuming that the shaker that has the high end is on the left. I'm going to go to the left side of the signal and pull it down a little bit. So now I am, if this hi-hat is hitting at the same time as that shaker that's already taking up a lot of high end and it's panned to the left, now I'm kind of carving out a little bit of room for that. And the hi-hat is going to be a little bit brighter on the right side of the signal and in the mix. And we can actually put this in mono in our master and listen what the left and right are going to sound like just by panning. So we're going to pan to the left and we're going to hear what's coming out of the left side of the signal. And then we'll pan to the right and hear only what's coming from the right side of the signal due to this EQ. So you can hear that it's pretty sharp on the right side. Maybe I'll tone that down just a little bit. But now you can definitely hear that there is a pretty significant difference between the left and the right. This will make your mixes sound more interesting. It'll allow you to carve out some room in your mix if you have competing frequencies when it's in stereo. Let's do one more example where we're actually going to balance a guitar plucking sound. Let's go ahead and check the guitar sound now. So it sounds like one side is a little bit more bass heavy and the other is a little bit more high end and I want to balance that so that it's coming down the center of the mix a little bit more. Uh, that's a little bit balanced on the left and the right possess both lower and high frequencies. Let's go ahead. I'm going to keep this in mono and I'm going to listen to just the left and just the right. It sounds like the right side is a little bit softer in the high end. It's muffled a little bit where the left is a bit higher. And the right side actually is the lower side. So I'm going to put this back in stereo. I'm going to turn this, grab this EQ, left, right, and I'm going to boost the high end of the right side of the image to try and balance out and make it a little bit brighter on the right side. Also going to go into the left side and maybe take out, maybe push up the left low end a little bit and reduce it in the right side. I'm going to take the left side down a little bit back to where it was. I'm going to listen in mono. The right side of the signal sounds a bit higher now. It's a little bit more balanced and we can take a listen before and after. The difference is pretty subtle in this example, a little bit more obvious in the hi-hats, but getting that high end up in only the right side has balanced this guitar sound quite a bit. This brings me to technique number two, which is going to be mid-side EQ. So it's very similar in the sense that you are going to be changing the two parts of the signal, both the mono signal or the center of the image and the stereo or the width of the image. I'm going to try this first on this guitar and we're going to just grab another EQ. We'll keep the, the left and right EQ on and I'm going to put this mid side mode on. And now the blue is going to be the mid, which is the center, more direct center of your mix or the mono signal of your mix. And the stereo or the width, the side information is going to be the orange S. So if you wanted to grab a sound like this and make it sound a little bit wider, but only the high end of the sound, you can use this mid side technique. Let's go ahead and boost just the high end up just like this. 
Let's take the middle of the signal and we're just going to bring that down a little bit to compensate for that volume boost. And also from the side, I don't really need that low end information in this. When we're dealing with this guitar, I don't want that low end to be in the wider section of the mix. I don't want that low end to be in stereo because it can cause phase cancellation issues when we down mix to mono. So I'm going to just slightly drag maybe 250, 300 here and get rid of that low end and maybe the mid I can push up a little bit just to compensate. And let's go ahead and take a listen to before and after. What you're listening for is it's going to sound like it's a little bit further, especially if you're wearing headphones, it's gonna sound wider. Like, and when we turn off the mid side, it's gonna feel a bit closer and a bit more centered into the mix. It does sound a little bit brighter due to the actual boost, so I'm going to reduce that just slightly and actually reduce the mid to compensate as well. I don't want you thinking that it sounds better only because it sounds brighter, so we'll listen one more time. Overall, it sounds a bit cleaner. It has a bit more room to breathe, especially in my headphones. I can really hear that it is a much wider sound. We're gonna go one more example now. I'm going to try this on a pad sound. Before I do this last example, I'm gonna sit right here for two seconds. You're gonna go down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. If you already are subscribed, you're gonna like that video. I'll wait, I'll wait. Go do it now. Nothing to see up here. All right, good. Back to the video. So last, we have this pigment. It's just a preset I have. No, I don't because it's not there. So I'm going to grab this pigment and I'm going to use a pretty low pad. It's going to be like a lo-fi, deep house type pad. I want it to be mono centered in the mix in that lower end of the pad, but I want the high end of the pad to be nice and sparkly and to have that, you know, stereo width. A lot of the time, we don't want low end in stereo because it can cause phase cancellation and it can create a little bit of mud in the width of the stereo image as well so let's go ahead play a chord and record it not over there but over here i'm gonna freeze and flatten this track so we can see just the audio okay go ahead and loop that and I'm going to grab this EQ, throw it on there, and we have st from stereo, we're going to go mid side. From this signal, I'm going to remove the mid from, you know, maybe just the high end here. I'm going to let a lot of room for that stereo image, that wide image to breathe. Then I'm going to just filter out some of the low. We don't want those really low signal as well. We don't want anything really below 150 for this sound. Then I'm going to go into the side or the stereo section of that sound i'm going to also remove but i'm going to remove more i'm going to remove pretty much anything below 1k for this sound i, I just don't want any of that mid section to really be present below there because i want just the high end to be really nice and wide and i want the low end just to, to have just a section of warmth and a section of power for this really nice full sounding pad then i'm going to boost up just slightly to get that high end sparkle as well. And let's take a listen before and after. Before we listen, I'm gonna grab another EQ and just filter out the unnecessary information that I don't want in the sound, just like that. Okay, and now let's take a listen with and without the mid side EQ, pushing the sides of the signal just a little bit and reducing the middle of the signal on the high end. So we're cleaning up a little bit of that mud in the lower section and we're boosting up that high so that's a little bit more sparkly and in the high end. But I kind of want that warmth. I'm going to compensate a little bit more by boosting this just slightly here in the mids of the signal and going back to the stereo or the side signal and I'm going to boost that high end just a little bit so we get that really nice top end that's going to be really sharp and shiny. So let's go ahead and listen one more time and then that's going to wrap things up for this video. too much. 
much. Maybe introduce just a little bit of that mid back into the high end. I think that sounds good. It's creating room in our mix for other instruments to be in that, that area that kind of accumulates that mud around 100 to three, 400 hertz. And we're boosting just the side images and we're just pushing the high end just slightly so that it's a little bit shinier and a little bit more atmospheric and spacey in our headphones or our speakers. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. I put out new videos like this all the time, and it will help you become a better producer faster by learning from techniques like this.